Once you've chosen the location, size, and design of your rain garden, it's time for construction. Here are 12 steps to success. First, check if any permits are required by your local authority. Then, call Alberta One Call and Shaw to mark the location of buried services. All clear? Let's build. Start by marking out the location of your rain garden. Upside down spray paint or garden hose are common tools to help you visualize the results. If your location has existing lawn, remove it. A sod cutter can be rented to make the task easier. The removed sod can be composted, flipped over to build up garden beds, given away, or sent to the landfill where there are often grinding facilities. Remove the soil to create the ponding depression which should be sunk about 10 centimeters below the surrounding area. If you have good existing soil depth, this is all the digging you need to do. It will do more harm than good to disturb the well-established soil and subsoil further down. However, if you have a newer home, you need to add soil, and you'll need to dig all the way down to the subsoil and remove some of that too for the best result. You are aiming to have 30 centimeters of soil and a 10 centimeter deep depression. Use leftover soil to beef up or start planting beds, top dress other lawn areas, and level out the low side of your rain garden. If you've dug all the way to the subsoil, take a moment to scuff up or scarify the subsoil surface to make it easier for the water to soak in. Abrupt changes in the soil slow down water. A rake, fork, shovel, or a tooth bucket on a bobcat or backhoe can be used. Blend a few inches of the subsoil with a few inches of the soil to make a smoother transition. Now it's time for the topsoil or garden mix to be added and spread. If you're using garden mix or adding compost, use only vegetable-based amendments, not those containing animal manure, which may send nutrients into our waterways when your rain garden overflows. Soil is fluffy when it's placed. Stomp over it a few times to get it to settle about five centimeters. Use soil or salvaged clay and soil to raise the low side of the rain garden. If your rain garden is long, you may need to use soil or clay to create small dams along the way to step the levels down. Garden mix is too easily washed away, so make sure you keep some topsoil or clay on hand for this. Check that you have a good 10 centimeters of ponding depth with as flat a bottom as possible so water can spread out. Also, check that you have a level edge on the low side. Use a line level and a string, a digital altimeter like a zip level or a laser level to check. Protect the water inlet at the top of your rain garden by adding a few stones to make sure soil does not wash away. You may need a few stones at the overflow end as well. You can also wait and watch the garden after it rains to see where you might have erosion and add some rocks then. Rain gardens can be planted with any combination of plants that tolerate wide swings in moisture. Use native species as much as possible because they tolerate drought, don't need fertilizer, and provide habitat for native creatures, especially pollinators. Finally, in order to conserve moisture, deter weeds, and stabilize the soil while plants are filling in, place shredded wood mulch to a depth of about 10 centimeters between the plants. Don't use rubber mulch, which may be toxic to plants, and don't use landscape fabric because it will clog. Shredded mulch holds together like Velcro, which means it won't float as much as bark nuggets or wood chips. Mulch will settle and break down in a few years, and your plants should be filling in by then. A rain garden in the rain.